I'm I'm blunt. I'm direct. Nick. Nick. I'm just direct. I'm direct. No, you're mean. There's no romance. What's the point? <laughs> just kidding. Maybe. Darling. Yo, it's Anne, a can antagonist. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk all things books, movie, and TV with an emphasis on romance. We're doing a little something different today. I'm gonna be discussing the mess that was Love is Blind season seven. I haven't done or ever really planned to do a long form video about a reality TV show. I usually reserve that for my wrap ups, but I just haven't given you guys a video in a while. And I thought it would be a good idea to just discuss the mess that was Love is Blind because I have been watching Love is Blind since season one. I've watched every single season, sadly. And if you have two, let me know, because you may be entitled to compensation. You may, you, may. <laughs> you might, you might just be, because um, you deserve compensation for your pain, okay? Love is Blind has come such a long way from season one. And by a long way, I mean a long way to hell. I'm just gonna go couple by couple. I'm gonna go from least problematic to most problematic. So first couple, I would say Taylor and Garrett. I actually really like Taylor and Garrett, more than the common folk. I find their relationship really endearing. I love Taylor specifically, like her sense of humor and the way she is reminds me of myself, you know? Um, like dry, sarcastic humor. She's very unrelaxed when it comes to like real situations. Again, me. But when it comes to like regular stuff, she's pretty lighthearted and is able to joke around. I actually think the banter that her and Garrett have is so cute. I just think they get along so well. And if I had a relationship, I would want us to have banter similar to how Taylor and Garrett have. Now I will say Garrett, Garrett was on my list at first because the way he reacted about her ethnicity in the pods did give me pause. And it did read like, if Taylor wasn't, if Taylor didn't look the way she looked, if she wasn't mixed, I don't know that we would have the same story. And that is kind of scary. I mean, it's not uncommon that he's only dated inside his own race. I think that's completely normal. I think that's the case for most people. But I just felt that he, his reaction was like, oh, you're being calculated. Like, sir, you're on Love is Blind. You're on Love is Blind. You should consider the fact that you are possibly gonna end up with somebody who's not the same race as you. That's literally the point, right? Of love is blind. He made it seem like her passing as as white was like a crime when it's like everybody should be passing as purple in this in the pots. We know that doesn't happen. We know people talk and that you usually can get inflections, but his immediate reaction to fear that she wasn't a white woman is scary. But it turned out really well. They look great. They He really loves her. I think it works out. I think it helps that Taylor is stunning. It helps that Taylor is a beautiful woman that he would not even get a chance to talk to in normal life. So I think he understands that. And that's why I think he came correct right after that. But yeah, I didn't love that reaction. That's definitely the stain on their relationship or the stain on their like edit in the show if you will i also completely disagree with everyone on the internet who thought taylor was overreacting about the the text about garrett lying about the text why you why would you lie about something like that you this is a short amount of time everything's condensed so when you lie red flag and i just can't i can't take y'all seriously because i know i know the moment that if if there was a moment where garrett ended up going back to that ex or doing anything, y'all would be like, oh, well, the signs were right there. Look how he took the... So I know y'all are capping. Like, the internet is not a real place. And for that reason, because they would then flip it and turn it around and be like, I always knew there was something. So I commend Taylor for doing her due diligence. I'm sorry, Taylor. Taylor's my girl. I like her. And unless I find racist tweets, she's she's a good one for me. Say, that goes for you too, Garrett. Um, I hope you didn't tweet nothing crazy. I like them, I wanna keep it that way. I'm also scared to declare when I like things because I feel like they always come back to bite me in the butt. But for now, they're going in the Love is Blind Couples Hall of Fame, if you ask me, uh, my personal favorites. 
Next, I want y'all to know that after Taylor and Garrett, it was super hard to rank these people in terms of problematicness. Okay, because for real, all these couples should be top two, not number two, when it comes to being problematic. Ramses and Marissa. Yep, yep. I know. I think a lot of people are really out on this couple. Like they think some people would say they're the second most problematic or like third. But I disagree. I disagree. Because I think they're both fools. I think they're both fools. I feel for Marissa. I feel for her. I felt for her during that relationship because I did feel like Ramses was very selfish. He was very take, take, take. The man does not give at all, it seemed, at least on the show. Um, and he's very self-centered. That being said, Marissa does not center herself even a little bit. That girl wants to be loved so bad. And she said this, I'm not even... Like, and everybody wants to be loved, but the way she wants to be loved so bad, despite the fact that this person isn't even loving her properly, is is the scary part. And I don't, but the reason I don't think they're super problematic is because this happens every day. This happens every day. I don't think Ramses is a complete villain for being a selfish uh, partner and lover because... The man ended the situation. He ended the selfishness, okay, by letting her go. And for that, that's why I have to put them at the lower part. I do think where he dragged it until he dragged it to the very end, to the point where Marissa's mama and her tongue ring were driving to come see you in that wedding and you're, and you're breaking it off, nasty work, nasty work. So he's still going to get them lashes for that. But... All in all, I can't be too mad because it ended the way it was supposed to. It was done. I felt so bad for Marissa when she was crying. I, I was almost disturbed watching the breakdown that happened there. It was just, it was scary. Like I, did, I was like, cut away, cut away, because it was just so painful to watch. Like you could feel, ugh, you could feel her pain. And I was like, dang, I hated seeing that. Hated seeing that. But I will say, Marissa's personality, it's not even the bubbliness, okay? Because I also, I'm like not a bubbly person at all. So that type of personality is a little bit tough for me to swallow. Yes, yes, yes. The part that irks me the most about Marissa is the girl did not stand on anything. She did not stand on anything. Every opinion she had was, you know, spoon fed to her. It's placed for her. The girl does not know who she is. I will say these shows were filmed over a year ago. So I think people can grow and change. I don't, I'm not going to assume that Marissa is the exact same person that she was when she was on that show. So this is no disrespect to her now. But Marissa on the show did not know who she was. She's in the military. But she's now engaged to a man who's very anti-military. How do you feel about that? Do you, you're proud of your service. But do you acknowledge that there were problematic parts? Yes. But how do you feel about that? Do you feel they're problematic enough that you should never return to the army? Or is it, mm, I didn't really like some of the stuff, but I might still participate. I don't, I don't think she has a clear, I don't know how she feels actually. I think that's the point. I don't know how she feels and I don't think she knows how she feels. And I'm not saying she has to have a definitive answer, but to... To consider being with someone who is so vehemently against it, I think you should stop and tell yourself, hmm, maybe this isn't right. Or even the way he handles the birth control conversation or just the conversation about intimacy. Like you are PMSing and this man is, is screaming, crying, throwing up because you pushed him away. And she brought up, that's why I'm saying Marissa She's not silly because she brought up the, oh, you know, the stats about um, men who leave their, their women or their wives when they're sick. Yeah, Marissa. And this man showing examples of that one to two weeks in. But what are you going to do? Instead of, you know, standing on business, making sense, you're going to try to seduce him some more. What? Like, I read an interview where she said that she felt him pulling away. So she decided to put on some lingerie and run around on the house just to see if he would give her some attention. And he was like, he was doing that 
to your lingerie. No, no, no. And I get it. People do crazy things when they're in love. Yes, yes, yes. That I'll give. But I still feel like her sense of self, she didn't even stand on that. She didn't even want to stick to that. The girl needed Barbie to tell her that patriarchy is bad. And when when he said, when he gathered her, he said, that's what you needed to know that patriarchy was bad? Get her. Get her. Because that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. Like, to me, I didn't feel like one original thought from her. It felt like she heard something from somebody and she takes it and she goes, well, I heard this, that, that. Well, I heard this, that, that. Or people, like, she just assumes the position of a girl boss feminist, but she doesn't actually follow through on that. She doesn't actually even believe probably half the stuff. She's just like, oh, this is what's cool or this is interesting. I don't know. She's just like, I don't want to say this, but she just came off like there was no thoughts being put into these decisions she was making or how she feels about things. Like, Ramses gave this excuse of, oh, your energy, your energy, your energy. I don't really think that's what it was. I think, first of all, I don't even think he really liked Marissa like that. I think he liked something else about Marissa, but he didn't like her like that. Like he thought she was a fun time for that that moment. But when he looked at like, what do they have in common? Are they actually compatible? Does she have principles that she sticks to? Because he clearly does, even though I don't agree with a lot of them, oh, I, I think I don't like, I don't enjoy intercourse with with protection on, but but I want to not have kids. What? What? At least this man can stand wrong and strong. Versus Marissa, it's like, girl, the wind goes here, she goes there. The wind goes this way, she would go down. You say jump, she says how high. I just, that personally annoys me. And she would just say things, be like, yeah, he would leave me if I went back to the military. To her friend, her military friends. Like, read the room, Marissa. Read the room. Makes sense. Why are you embarrassing yourself? And don't even get me started on how she reacted at the reunion. Like, oh, we all do silly things. I was messing around with this. Have some decorum. Have some decorum. Have some sense. And stop embarrassing your mama. Your mom's sitting right there on that couch thinking, talking about how she had to pick you up from the floor. And then you're talking about like, yes, you went back six months later to beg this man again. But I feel like what makes Ramses really terrible for dragging it out all the way to the end is this man was not even willing to date her. Like that's how bad it is. Because I think a lot of people could empathize with, I don't feel ready to get married. I think a lot of people wouldn't actually be on his neck about that. But it's the fact that this man didn't even want to date her. He was like, no, 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 we're done. I know your mama's driving up. I know you got that dress, but we're done. We're done. They're a mess, hot mess express. But all in all, I don't find them really problematic because I don't think they were intentionally cruel to each other in any way, really. So I feel that's why they're at their position. Hey, editing in here. Um, I totally forgot to talk about Steven and Monica because there are too many dang couples on the show, bro. But yeah, in terms of problematicness, I would put them right after Ramses and Marissa, Monica and Steven, or as Jesse Wu would say, Olua is Steven, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, they both have really not fun personalities. They just, even from the pods, they seem mismatched. Like I didn't understand their connection. They didn't have any chemistry, and that's both in the pods and outside of the pods. So I didn't understand why like what what was going on monica the fact that that man called you a mutt her being like oh i'm so sorry that you're beating yourself up about emotionally cheating huh i'm sorry did we hear the same thing because the way steven framed it technically i cheated because i dm'd another girl. that's cheating that's cheating you would have gone all the way if you could have you just weren't good enough to get all the way there before you got caught so yeah, just the way he framed his whole cheating scenario was big red flag, was giving ugh, and then he calls Monica a mutt, please. We're done. We're done. Conversation over. Conversation over. But anyways, she gets engaged to this man, and uh, she sees him. I don't think Monica liked the way that Steven looked. Um, I don't know if that had 
if that was the reason she treated him kind of weird at the once they were at the honeymoon because Monica did not like that man. Like she found him insufferable and annoying. And for the record, I do too, but I'm not engaged to the man. So, and then Steven had the audacity to be DMing girls about his kinky fetishes. Ew, like he's just a deviant. He's just a deviant. Like every five seconds, this man was talking about fetishes, was talking about sticking things in mac and cheese. Like, no, no. How can that person be taken seriously? And then the way he was acting at the reunion, I was like, big, like he, he makes my skin crawl. He makes my skin crawl. I just don't, mm, mm, that's a chop. That's a chop. And he needs to, he needs help. He actually needs help. Like I'm being serious. I think he needs help because why are you doing things for women only because you'll get favors out of them of the sexual nature? Seek help immediately next most problematic couple is tim and alex whenever i saw them on my screen boy was i discontent boy was i let's go to the next one i just found it particularly painful to watch their scenes especially in the pods i was uh, 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 fast forward because the trauma dumping the trauma dumping did we learn one thing about alex in the pods all i learned was that her parents had ms did we learn one thing about Tim in the pods? Probably a little bit more. But all we learned about was his sisters passing away and how he really hated his ex. So he got, I just think Tim gave me the ick from the jump with that story about, well, my girlfriend at the time said I, I don't like the t-shirt and I bought it. Ew, ew. Alex, I felt no ways about her in the pods because again, we learned nothing about her. So I didn't have anything good or bad to say. When they first met each other, and he kept making that, I got the dog in me. I got the dog in me joke. I too was icked out. Again, I was like, ew. And you know who else got the ick? Alex. Alex did not like that man. Alex doesn't like Tim's personality. I'm so sorry. I don't believe for a second that they really liked each other. I think Tim thought he really liked Alex um, until... A moment but I do believe Tim liked Alex he just has annoying little brother energy and Alex never liked that man not even not as soon as they started talking she said uh and she was hoping that it would get better it did not so then we fast forward to Mexico and Tim and Alex have an off-screen fight which they end up uh, revealing more details about in the reunion um, at first when I heard about Alex putting supposedly putting a hand on his mouth I was like oh the ghetto like good thing he removed himself this is bad ew and apparently she called him out of his name that's that was the whole thing so I was like oh no Alex is a mess because I'm like how are you fighting behind this man that you don't actually like what no so I thought they need to be done like I thought Mexico they should call it they didn't they kept going and Tim had this really really sweet moment with Alex's father and I was like, wow, wow, so beautiful. Like almost teary eyed, it was beautiful. But the entire time that it was happening, I was thinking to myself, this is so unfortunate that this couple is not gonna make it. Uh, immediately, like when she was, when he was meeting her dad, I was like, this is so unfortunate that this is such a beautiful moment because this couple is not making it. And at the time I thought it would, they wouldn't make it because of Alex. I was like, Alex is not gonna marry this man. She's gonna say no at the altar. So. It's unfortunate that all this, the, the, the family has to be involved in it and it's like all this for what? Then we find out what actually happened. So we fast forward to their breakup and I was like, oh, Tim, Tim is, Tim sucks too. Tim, I mean, Tim sucked because I didn't like his personality, but I was like, that's not a fault really. But Tim sucks too, as in this man is petty. And that's what we learned from that t-shirt conversation about his ex and whatnot. This man is petty. He will work against his own interest just to hold on to, to a score. He, he will work against his own interest just to say that he won or that he's correct. So he calls Alex, she doesn't answer. He texts her, she doesn't answer. She texts back, then she calls him and he goes, I don't wanna talk on the phone right now. And he's like, I feel like you only call me on your own time and not on my own time. What? What? What, what, is, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? A couple is meant to communicate. 
if I call you or you call me, vice versa, what does it matter? What does it matter if we're communicating? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you keeping track of phone calls? Are you keeping track of when I call you, you don't answer, but when you call me, I answer? Don't do that. Don't do that. That's silly. That's silly. And if you actually want to approach the conversation properly, say that. Alex calls you and you're able to talk. Talk, you weirdo. And if you really feel a way about, oh, she, she, I feel like whenever I call you, you don't answer, talk to her about that. Say, hey, it's been like maybe two, three, four times that I've called you and you haven't answered. What's, what's tea? What's tea, sis? Because that's ridiculous. I don't understand what, this, what that was about. Him trying to get credit for cuddling her in the bed. What? Tim, are you okay? I can't make Alex a victim. I don't agree with people who do put her as a victim because Alex was not invested in this relationship at all. I don't really sympathize with her. Oh, like he went in front of her daddy and then did all this letter and blah, blah, blah. You also went in front of your daddy for a man you barely like. I'm sorry. This is the show. Like people meet each other's parents. That's what happens. And you didn't really like this man. I'm so sorry. I cannot be convinced that you actually liked him. I did not see the evidence of that. Alex in general has a nonchalance that borders on just like laziness. Like, like you let Love is Blind come into your apartment when it looked like that. You, you couldn't even phone one friend to help you clean that apartment up. Like be like, girl, I, I had to leave on a whirlwind. Can you please help me out? What? Not one friend who could shove all that trash in the closet. Okay. She just, to me... Even when she was meeting the parents, homegirl had one hand in her pocket when she was hugging the parents. What? I'm sorry. Where I'm from, that's just like not acceptable. I don't, I just feel like she doesn't know or hasn't shown, at least on the show, the skills to show that she cares because I can't see it. If you do care, I haven't seen it. And I think Tim picked up on that as well. Tim has a lot of issues. Like I just, I just recounted on the many issues and he would have these issues with any person. If it wasn't Alex, it would be another person. But I will say that Alex's attitude probably fueled Tim's very real insecurities. Like Tim has a lot of insecurities and Alex was just fueling them because of her indifference to the relationship. People can feel when you don't really want to be there. And at every turn, Alex showed that in my opinion she demonstrated that like I don't really want to be here take it or leave it like I don't even believe that Alex has a deep desire to be married either and I don't know if her apathy is because she was with Tim like her apathy is a result of Tim or is this how she is normally because either way that girl don't care she don't care she doesn't care. And, I, and you know what's so funny? She doesn't care so much that it makes Tim so angry. Oh, the man is angry. He's mad. He's mad because he wants her to care. And she just doesn't. So that's why I think he lashed out way too much at that breakup. He's like, I won't ever want to see you again. Projection. You're hurt. You're hurt. You're hurt because you know she don't like you. You're hurt because she called you what she called you. Um, in Mexico, which was completely inappropriate. I don't condone that at all. But you're mad because I think you know you like her more than she likes you and you you lashed out rather than being a normal person and being like, you know, I actually think this isn't working um, and I don't feel secure in our relationship and I don't think that's the way we should start. You could say that. You could be honest. Just be like, I don't feel secure in our relationship and I don't I don't think we should get married. That, that that could have been it, Tim. That could have been it. But you did what you did. And you're a petty little boy. So we're getting to our top two, not number two, problematic couples. And we have Nick and Hannah. Where do I start? I want to say on the record that Nick and Hannah are both insufferable. Together, they make the most annoying television to watch and um I genuinely wanted to pull my hair out yep yeah let's start with um Hannah Miss I'm direct I'm I'm blunt I'm direct Nick Nick 
I'm just direct. I'm direct. No, you're mean. <laughs> you're mean. You're mean. You're mean and downright cruel. The way you talk doesn't make sense. I'm blunt. I'm direct. A direct person would say, but the way Hannah phrases it is, the, the truth is, Nick, you're 28. I feel like you should know how to boil pasta. And remember when you told me you can cook, I feel like this doesn't make sense. It feels like you, you know, play up how how good you are at things, but I haven't seen that. That's, that, that's a, that would be fine. Nobody have a problem. Why are you then instead, Nick, you don't know how to do anything. I made you from a boy into a man. What? What? That's insane. You don't know this man. You don't know him. There's a problem. You have a problem, Hannah. You have a problem. And you know what it is? Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Because you know what shows, what really shows the low self-esteem is this scene where Nick is talking to Hannah and he says like, I feel like you talk down to me and you don't treat me as your equal. And she says this, I think you get treated as an equal once you start contributing as an equal. What? And that told me everything I need to know. Hannah, you have low self-esteem because why are you sticking around with someone who you don't find your equal? Why are you in a relationship with a man you don't respect? Because of low self-esteem. Because a person with self-esteem and self-respect would leave. They would say, this person is making me look crazy. This person is making me supposedly act out of character, even though I don't really think that's act out, acting out of character for you. So that's an issue. But let's just say he's making me angry. He's making me, he's not, I was going to show you my fun side, Nick. I was going to show you my fun side. So if he's not making you fun, leave, leave. You can leave. You can leave. And then that's why at the reunion, when she took zero accountability for the way that she talked to him and she was focused on the fact that he was calling her ugly behind the scenes. That only makes me look at you strangely again, because I'm like, why did you stay then? You don't respect this man. He doesn't even eat box and he's calling you ugly. Why are you here? Why are you here? Low self-esteem, low self-esteem. She needed to prove something. I don't know if it was I need to prove that he's a bad guy. I don't know if it was, I need to prove that he called me a five, but I, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna like it here. Or is it, I, I want him to look bad on TV. I don't know what her motive was, but all motives show signs of low self-esteem. She was worried about how he would think she looks from jump. And she was also the same person who concentrated on looks the entire time. So to me, it's low self-esteem. It's low self-esteem. Now moving on to Nick. Nick is not a real person. He's not a real person. Yes, he was a victim of Hannah's uh, verbal abuse. But that's where it ends. Nick was staying because of, of he wants to be famous. Hannah was also staying because she wants to be famous slash low self-esteem. But so Nick is there to get famous. I did not believe a word he said about, I love Hannah. I didn't, I didn't feel that even a little bit. I'm sorry. I didn't feel that even before she started being terrible. I didn't feel that from him. I don't know. I just don't trust him. I don't believe what he's saying him. Even when they were breaking up, I was like, bro, you are the worst actor ever. He was like, this is going to be the most terrible day of my life. Like I wanted to say yes to you at the altar. Did you? Did you? I don't believe you. <laughs> I just don't believe you. Like, oh, you know how Kim K said, no, no, I don't believe you. I don't believe that you really wanted to be with Hannah. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. And he was like, oh, her breaking up with me, like, this is the worst day of my life. No, I don't believe you. The worst day of your life was when you broke your knee at football camp because you won't stop talking about it. That's the worst day of your life. I don't even know if he wants to be married too. I don't really get that sense from him at all. Um, and I think why I don't believe his thing about Hannah is I don't even think he would date Hannah. Like there are a lot of couples on this show where I'm like, you don't need to be getting married, but well, not this season, but there are couples on the show that I've seen where I'm like, you don't need to be getting married, but you could date. 
like date a little bit and see what happens. Nick and Hannah have no business even being around each other. They could be friends at most, at most, but that's it. Both of you came on the show, Nick and Hannah, to get clout. And a lot of people come on the show to get clout. But you two, both of you standing on some kind of moral high ground about your intentions is crazy because it's, to me, the most obvious ploy between the both of you is that y'all were just there so you don't get fined. And I'm, I'm so glad that this season doesn't have the clout in terms of like following and things like that. I'm glad that it's not paying off because I want this to be a warning to others. I think the show is broken because too many people are there just to get clout. They know. They know. And it's, it's, really, it's really diluting the authenticity on the show. And we'll never get it back like we did in season one. So I feel like it's getting worse and worse each season with this clout chasing ridiculousness. For our most problematic couple, in number one spot, we have Tyler and Ashley. Also known as Lyler and the bird. Okay. What do I have to say about Tyler and Ashley? I'm so tired, yeah. I would die. I'm so tired. I'm really tired. I hope after this video, I never have to talk about them again. I really hope. Because I don't even want to give attention to people who abandon children. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give attention to people who abandon children, who excuse it, who make up stories about it. I don't know. And I hope that the court decides on November 15th that both of you will pay that child support. And it specifically frustrates me because they're a black couple. Of course it does. Ashley, you're really gonna die behind this man who has lied to you repeatedly. All right. You're really gonna go on a podcast denouncing children you don't know, denouncing children you have never met, denouncing children that were conceived long before you even knew this man and talk like you know with ultimate authority what's going on. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. How would I have my husband t having me talk about his business and he's not beside me to tell his own story? Why are you telling someone else's story? Where is Tyler? Where is Tyler? Have him sit on the couch, tell lies, instead of you being his mouthpiece for what reason? For what reason? I, I didn't foresee the problematicness that they would have. But I will say, I thought they were kind of sweet at the beginning. Then Tyler immediately in Mexico, when he said, oh, my exes are gonna come out of the woodwork. I was like, whoa, okay, red flag number one. But this was the biggest red flag. When he said, I didn't have any reason to be nice to these people. Oh, oh. Just prepare them. And people be like, he is not that nice. Well, it wasn't nice to y'all. Y'all yeah, didn't give me I a reason know. to be nice. Yeah. You should always, always beware of men, people, but especially men who claim they didn't treat people or women right until they were the one. I hate that narrative. I hate that narrative because one day you will not be the one. You will be one of the 20 hundred that he treated terribly. You should be treating people kindly because you're a person, a human being on this planet. You should be treating people kindly because that's what is meant to be. And if you claim, they're claiming Christianity as well, which makes it even worse. If you claim to be a Christian, Tyler, if you're praying with Ashley and that, you should be kind to people because God said so. Because God was kind to you. So as you, as he's kind to you, you should be kind unto others. So to, to be fully healed, to claim to you're fully healed and say, yeah, I had no reason to be nice to those girls. Insane, insane, scary behavior. And that put me off immediately. And then boom, the rumors about him having kids. I said, ooh, there it is. Whoop, there it is. But the worst part is Ashley standing 10 toes behind this man. 10 toes down. You look goofy. This couple claims we don't want attention. We don't want attention. I hope, 
I really hope we don't give them any more attention. I hope we don't give them attention. I hope brands don't give them more attention. And I hope the only attention they get is the child support mandate that they will get in the mail. Sorry to those kids. Sorry to those beautiful babies. All right, guys. That was my thoughts about Love is Blind season seven. I hope this video is kind of short and cute. Didn't want it to be too long. Let me know what you guys think. Definitely give your discourse, give your dissertation in the comments um, because this season was a mess. I feel like Love is Blind is headed towards disaster. I think this is, this is disaster actually. This season is disastrous and it's a train wreck we're watching. And I do think honestly without all the drama with Ashley and Tyler, would this season have really gotten all the clout it did? Like I really think they dropped the ball in terms of editing this season. Usually in the other seasons, we had a couple engaged by the first episode. We were heading on to a reveal. I felt like we spent so much time in the pods around characters who weren't important. We had rather unimportant conversations. Um, and I don't know. I just felt like all all the, the, the stuff surrounding the actual show was poorly executed. And it's the TikTok journalists that are, that are carrying the hype, you know? I don't even think we would be talking about it like this if it weren't for that. So Netflix needs to go back to the drawing board. Kinetic needs to go back to the drawing board because it don't make sense. It don't make sense. All right, I'm, I'm done talking. Tell me what you think. Let me know, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Darling.